In this video, I will be presenting five phases that are usually discernible when using inquiry-based learning and teaching. These phases are interconnected and help to shape students into independent re-inquirers. These phases can be described as inquiry phases. In the article, Phases of Inquiry-Based Learning, Definitions and Inquiry Cycle, which is a meta-analysis of the state of research on inquiry-based learning by Margot, Margus Padeste uh, and more research, there's a long list of them. Uh, well, anyways, in that article, they show how the research literature expresses a variation of how these phases are described. However, they clarify that from their research review that they are uh, all talking about the similar things, but using different uh, concepts and words. Therefore, they pro propose the following elements as part of an effective inquiry-based learning process. So going through these one by one. Orientation. It is about laying the foundation for the student's inquiry. That is, the teacher points to a problem that will form the basis of the student's journey. In order for them to understand this problem, it may be appropriate for them to have some knowledge about the subject. The teacher does have a rather large role at this stage in that he or she has the task of ensuring that students have basic knowledge needed to understand the subject they are studying and formulating the problem in a way that arouses their desire to inquire. Their focus is thus on creating the necessary conditions to inspire the students to make uh, to want to undertake a project of inquiry. Conceptualization is about understanding the problem at a deeper level. The aim here is to find out what the problem is about that a research uh, is about uh, so that a research question or a, or a hypothesis can be clarified. This in turn lays the foundation for students to start searching for answers to address the previous described problem. After a problem has been identified and research questions and possibly hypotheses have been formulated, the students enter the investigation phase. So this phase is the one that often comes to mind when talking about inquiry-based learning. Students who individually or in groups conduct their own small projects of inquiry where they are responsible for producing knowledge. This stage is expressed in three ways, ex exploration, experimentation, and as data, data, data interpretation. Again, how this is ex expressed varies between different research fields and programs, but as a general rule, this stage is about collecting knowledge, which they then test and finally interpret. This then allows students to return to their original research question and draw conclusions in relation to it. The next stage is therefore naturally conclusion. As the term suggests here, the students draw conclusions from the investigation that has been carried out. This includes the students reflecting on whether a result has been obtained for the research question and the possible hypotheses. And then finally, we have discussion. This part has two subcategories, communication and reflection. Communication and reflection. Research results are not something that should remain within with the individual student or student group. They should also be presented publicly, meaning communicated to a wider audience that critically examines their uh, results. This also includes taking part in the research results of others and critically reviewing them yourselves. Concordantly, reflection is an inward looking process where you reflect on how you came into the conclusion you did. Here it becomes relevant to ask, what did I do? Why did I do so? Did I do did I do well? What are the other options in a similar situation? And so on. Thus, you reflect on the research process itself and critically examine your work. If you have experience in research, these phases will certainly look familiar. Apart from the time when you were a PhD student, the only thing that this model really differs from the research practices is that you are not always supervised in that process. But otherwise, it is the same practices that the researcher is involved in that students are also allowed to be part of in inquiry-based learning. So they are actually learning to become researchers themselves.
Also, our researcher is aware that this process is not always as linear as it is presented here. Uh, how the different phases are linked to each other, when they are addressed, and how often varies between different disciplines and the research, different research projects. Throughout the research process, one must also go back and reassess previous steps. Therefore, Margus Pedaste et al. presents the following model of how inquiry-based learning works in practice. There you go. So as we see here, the process will require taking steps back as needed. For example, it may be important to reevaluate your research question when you come to a conclusion. If your conclusions cannot answer the question, but can answer another question, then you have to perhaps change your research question. Similarly, this model shows that communication and reflection occur throughout the process. Here we can imagine a student who is writing the final thesis. They have, should have several opportunities to present their work and develop it in relation to the comments they receive from their teacher, supervisor, or fellow students. Regardless, as a model, these inquiry phases describe how inquiry-based learning is expressed in different educational programs. Some programs may have a greater emphasis on some of these phases, while others make sure to incorporate all phases in the curriculum. However, model is helpful for all educators in that it clearly highlights all relevant stages of inquiry-based learning. So well, to conclude this lecture, in this lecture, I have presented inquiry-based learning as an educational approach through which research-based learning can be realized. What I still want to say is that inquiry-based learning requires careful planning in order to be implemented effectively. For example, if students are asked to do forms of inquiry for which they are not ready, deeper learning that inquiry, the deeper learning that inquiry-based learning has the potential for may not then occur. Teachers are also need to develop ways of assessing students' success with the tasks of inquiry in order to be able to see whether their learning is progressing. The students' learning is, prog are progress is progressing. Uh, that said, I hope that I have succeeded in sparking your interest in inquiry-based learning. If you are an educator, I encourage you to give inquiry-based learning a try so that your students can benefit from the advantages this form of teaching offers. If you think there was something that I missed or that you would like to see me talk about in the future, feel free to comment on my videos in the commenting field. So thanks for watching and take care.